Today I get to introduce Jerry Bradley, a great poet. Uh, so he was born and raised in the Prince Edward Island, but lucky for us, he moved to the better side of Canada. <laughs> uh, I met him at the Port Moody Writers Group, and he contributed to an anthology I made last year uh, called New Beginnings, and we helped raise funds for a share. Uh, he's now almost finished, as I said, his new book of poetry, uh, but today you get a sneak peek. Jerry Bradley. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. I'd like to thank the Port Moody Library as well for hosting the event. Put my, my poet's glasses on here. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'd like to read a couple of poems if I, if I get the time. Um, the first poem is, is about uh, an area in the far north. I think it's kind of uh, keeping in the same theme of some of the other writers. Um, has anyone ever been to uh, Lanso Meadows, the very top of Newfoundland? Yeah, it's okay. A couple of people have been. Uh, it's an amazing place. Uh, um, um, Sasha, uh, um, my wife, and I went there a couple of years ago, and I'd always been fascinated by it because I'd always heard the story about the Vikings, you know, the Vikings <coughs> landing in Lanso Meadows. And, uh, and if you go up there, sure enough, yeah, they, they, they were there. Um, it, to me, it was a little bit like, I don't know if you've ever gone to any of these places where something really immense or profound is happening. Maybe it's like going to Machu Picchu or going to the uh, Adrian's Wall or, or, or something like that, where you, where you have this sense when you walk the land and you walk the area, and especially if there's not many people around to you. Sometimes you, you have this feeling uh, of, of, of just a real connection to the place and just... Uh, uh, almost imagining what went on there. And, uh, and that's kind of the feeling I had when I, when I was at Lanza Meadows. Um, now apparently the, the story goes, one of the stories goes this way. There, there was a, a group of people that lived in the north at that time. They were called the Dorsets. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the Dorsets or not, but they were this mysterious group of people. And they came maybe 2000 BC and lived uh, from 2000 BC to about 1000 AD in that area, and they were they were a, a large people. They were they were they're mu they're much bigger than the, than the local uh, people. And in fact, a lot of the uh, archaeological work and DNA work they're doing now, they they have this theory that these people actually came over came over the other way. They came over from Greenland. They came over the top. Came from uh, northern Europe and northern uh, Siberia in that way. So anyhow. There were this mysterious people. They didn't have bow and arrow technology. Um, they were they were large, and they didn't really intermingle with the local people. And there was uh, the local people had stories about them, how they when they see them they would run off. So we don't really know very much about them, other than um, they lived there. They were solitary, kept to themselves, were bigger than average, uh, and, and and ran off when you came to see them. So, and there's a very good chance that the Vikings encountered the Dorsets when they landed in Lanza Meadows. Um, so anyhow, this is, this is just my poem about it. Uh, maybe they didn't. Maybe it's sort of like my version of uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Maybe I could call this Once Upon a Time in Lanza Meadows. So, but anyhow, here goes. Lanza Meadow. Lanza Meadow, Lanza Meadow of Dorsets. Paleo Eskimos extinct. And let me just say something about the word Eskimo. It's not a word that's used anymore, and it has, uh, you know, pejorative connotations because um, I, I guess there was a theory that it was the Cree word for people who eat raw meat, and um, I think they've disproved that. But anyhow, it's it's not a, a word that the either the Inuit or the Inuit uh, 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 embrace because. Everyone has a word for themselves, uh, for their own people, and this was not a word that they chose. So uh, anyhow, it's not really uh, current in, in, in talking about the indigenous people of the north, but it's used in archaeology to talk about these, these groups of people that maybe hovered around the top of the world, and, and, and they call them Paleo-Eskimos. Anyhow, Lasso Meadows, Doris, it's Paleo-Eskimos extinct. The sunny day hoards the savagery of this wild place. 
so far from everywhere. A summer bog meadow, a soporific mine of berry pickers, stone foundations hinting of husbandry, children with wooden swords, paper horns, baked apple berries hanging low, warm and red as skin lesions. We have no indication that the Vikings ever fought with the indigenous people here, says the Parks Canada employee. In fact, it is more likely that they set up trading routes, valuable commodities for valuable commodities. Why did you come here in your whale-bellied boats, you hard men from the north? You men with thorn on your faces the color of autumn leaves. Big men like us, but with a full-gorged hunger in your eyes. Was it gods, lands, or further beasts of forest and sea, or only the relentless pushing breeze? Scralings, you called us. We puzzled it out over the fire and sensed nothing good in this. Or maybe that was your word for the other people, the small gnawing people to the south, the ones who told you that we would always run. And so it should come to this again, best fighter against best fighter. You had done this before, as had I. Mind the patience of the quiet killer waiting long at the ice hole. You bloated on battle frenzy, skull cracking, singing the world's end coming any day. We locked each other tightly, like dancers, like great bears rising up on our haunches, an embrace where footing was all the rule. Could you smell the war jam pulsing in my ear well as I felt the charcoal bloom oiling your locks? Latched on, resolute in our endings, no small men from the south, those only mosquitoes to our ears. It came so quietly. You clipped me slightly, no more than a cuff from an elder to an inattentive boy, and then overhead and down, the killing blow. I knew it well, and then the new pelt-eyed nothingness. Did I cry out a mother's name? No shame in that. Did her colorless foremouth leap upwards from my dwindling eyes to freshen the iridescent tannin skein in a quiet pooling on this cloudberry bog? For now, here we all lie as minute spores exhaled by tundra fungi. No songs of praise from the mute dreamings of berry pickers. No etchings carved in narwhal tusks. No runes carved in shiplap boards. For here, bone goes quickly to a soggy pulp blood to a tarry clay in this wild place so far from everywhere. So, uh, thank you. If anyone would like to take this poem, poem with it, it's, it's right up there. Um, I'll, I'll try one more here. Um, I was just thinking the other day, it, it's been a little over three years since uh, Leonard Cohen died. Um, I'm surprised so much time has gone by. And Leonard Cohen was a real hero to me. I loved his poetry. I loved his songs. Uh, he was such a cool guy. I, I can't think of too many other people I'd want to be. Maybe James Bond, but he's <laughs> even cooler than James Bond, I'd say, Leonard Cohen. Anyhow, uh, here's, uh, here's my tribute to Leonard Cohen. Of course, to do this, I guess I would need to adopt kind of a husky voice, which I don't have, but... I'll do my best here. Okay. This is called The Tomb of St. Leonard. We tracked hard to the tomb of St. Leonard, looking for some wise old script. We thank the angels you brought the umbrella to roll back the stone to the crypt. Inside, all I fathomed was refuge and babe. I was losing all hope. Until you put your hand to the way of small things, and found a scrawl in old pack of smokes. It said, Adam turned and looked at the garden to see what he had lost. He looked at the core of the apple and he watched it begin to rot. He looked down and he saw his nakedness and wanted to cower and run until he saw all the time in Eve's deep dark eyes for then he knew why he did what he'd done. And turning a little sadly to him to explain his fib, said, Lord, I'd rather cause suffering to ever lose this rib. 
the Lord came down from his mountain and he dropped a scowl and frown and from thence on gave to lovers a cocked hat gold brim crown. We hiked back again over the mountains and in the flat place even held hands. I caught you when you tripped in that old snake hole and I saw her again, the girl with the shorts and the tan. We reached the edge of the city of searchers just as the day was losing all light. You used the last of the grocery money for fare and we caught the last bus downtown for the night. Tune the St. Lauderdale. Thank you.